Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to have you. Um, the The last few months of doing the uh, the tactical game speed and agility program have been awesome. And one kind of fun little thing that I didn't tell you about before we get started here is that uh, people constantly look at the 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 reels that I post on Instagram, and they're like, "When are you doing tactical games? When are you doing tactical games?" I'm like, "No, no, no." read more of the caption. This is a speed and agility program for three gun. Like this is exactly what we wanted. <laughs> I think I had that exact same question for you, Dave. Oh, no kidding. Well, so <laughs> it's funny. So little, little, uh, backstory, um, years ago when I started the, uh, the three gun show, um, I was uh, doing like Spartan races and, uh, working out in a CrossFit gym and decided like I wanted to dedicate to three gun, but I also saw at the same time, three gun nation, which was a television show was really popular and just as I got uh, got the show started, a couple of guys that were on that show had over the like the the winter break had dropped a bunch of weight, gotten uh, gotten fit, gotten on fitness programs, and all of a sudden like put on a bunch of speed. And so they were kind of uh, heading up on the uh, the rankings. And I thought like, wow, okay, so this this they're onto something here. These are guys that know what they're doing. They're at the top of their game. And so maybe there's something to this fitness thing. And for years, I've tried to get. Uh, like a partner to um, like write a fitness program specifically for three gun or practical shooting in general. And it just never worked out. No one saw the the vision, but then now the tactical games is doing it. It's, it's freaking cool because it's available. It's on an app and it happens every day. And that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so uh, Amanda, I want to uh, obviously get into uh, the programming. What uh, exactly the stuff that I've been doing. I want to, I'm so excited about it. I want to tell other people about it as well. And so you're going to help me do that, but let's, let's talk about you. Let's, let's figure out uh, who Amanda is. So you're, you know, personal trainer, you're um, doing the, uh, the speed and agility program. You're doing all the programming for that. Where did this, like, uh, I guess, where did, where did this career path come from? Is this uh, is this a passion? Did you go to school for this? How did, uh, how did you get into it? Yeah, so I grew up in a suburb just outside of Detroit um, from a very young age. I actually had to text my mom this morning and figure out when she enrolled me in dance classes. And she said probably around the age of three. So around three or four years old, um, I started dance and I grew up dancing literally every form of dance. Um, so very active from a young age. Um, around high school, I started weightlifting um, that was something that I just enjoyed. And I was probably one of the few girls in my high school in the weightlifting room or going to a commercial gym at that time. Um, but again, it was, it was just something I, I really enjoyed. It was challenging for me. Um, and throughout that time I played, you know, a variety of sports from soccer to volleyball to t-ball, all of the above. Um, I studied marketing in school. Hey, me too. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. Um, I, it's just me sitting behind a desk all day. Not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love interacting with people. I love, you know, moving my body. So um, fast forward 2013, I moved to New Orleans with my fiance, Nick, and uh, we didn't know a soul in New Orleans. So we, uh, we started uh, in the CrossFit space. Um, we did a fundamentals class and it absolutely kicked our asses. I remember we lived like three blocks from the gym and Nick was like, yeah, let, let's walk to the gym. That'll be our warm up." <laughs> and it was the most basic workout, you know, like air squats and sit-ups and, you know, wall ball shots, something very basic in the beginning. And the look on my face on that walk home, I was like, why in the hell did we walk <laughs> You know, a total of three blocks, but it, it just absolutely took it out of me. Um, but at the same time, the community there was absolutely fantastic. You know, I was so used to working out on my own, not really having a program to follow, um, just kind of plugging in my headphones and going. Um, but being in this space with community, you know, all these people are doing the same workout. They're pushing each other. I really love that. So, of course, we signed up for CrossFit, um, and I just I love the variety in the workouts, and again, the community was just fantastic. 
Um, fast forward from there, I was asked to do a level one certification at my CrossFit gym. Um, they hosted the level one seminars monthly. Um, so CrossFit headquarters actually offered them two slots um, for their members to take part in the certification process. So I was lucky enough to be selected to be one of those participants. Um, so I did my level one in CrossFit, um, stuck with that for about five years. And then I kind of got to a point where I was like, you know, my body just doesn't love this anymore. Um, I was spending six to seven days a week in the gym for two to three hours a day. Um, I did a few like smaller group competitions. I've never been really a, a competitive athlete against others. I'm more competitive with myself than anything. Um, but it was just never about like putting a certain weight on the board or, you know, beating everyone's time in the class that that kind of stuff never really mattered to me. Um, so again, I, I just, I got a little burnt out with it and was seeking a different form of training. Um, so one of our coaches at the gym, he started teaching a kettlebell class and I signed up for that, fell in love with it, you know, just switching up the implements I was using felt so much better on my body. You know, I, I wasn't using a barbell for every movement. I wasn't looking to, you know, hit 60 to 100 reps of something within 10 minutes. Like it was no longer about that. It was, you know, focusing on quality of movement and our form um, while still getting a lot of great strength and conditioning work within that, that workout. Um, so I started uh, coaching from there. Um, that was just something I became so passionate about. I loved being in the gym with that community and I wanted to do more and see how I could help people. Um, so fast forward from there, uh, Nick and I have moved a lot. You'll, you'll catch on to this. <laughs> we moved to the panhandle of Florida and I was looking for a gym, ended up in a strength conditioning space. Um, they actually offered me a mentorship program. So I had a mentor for two years while I was there. Um, and it was a big change of pace for me because I went from working with a lot of young professionals in New Orleans to really like a retirement community in Florida. Um, a lot of the folks there were more like 50 and up, um, recovering from a lot of, you know, previous surgeries, had a lot of orthopedic issues. So this presented a pretty big challenge for me. It was something that actually made me pretty uncomfortable in the beginning because now I have these people that are coming in to work with me. They trust me as an expert. And I haven't worked with a lot of these, you know, injuries before. I haven't worked with people who have had multiple nip, uh, knee and, and hip replacements and spinal fusions. And those are huge surgeries like that, you know. Yeah. That, and that's different than like telling a 20 something to, you know, go pick up a wall ball and do 100 shots and come back when you're done. Absolutely. These are people who, you know, have a hard time just moving around, getting up and down out of a chair um, going for a walk, you know, it was a totally different change of pace. Um, but it was probably one of the greatest learning opportunities for me. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and that, that really, you know, just, it, it has trickled into so much of the work that I do today with my clients here in Texas and, and so much of the work that I put into the speed and agility program and other remote programs that I create for clients now. Hmm. Yeah. So that, that, um, I guess wasn't expecting like dance to go to CrossFit there. I think that's pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so very, I guess, very diverse background as far as like, uh, uh, training methodologies go. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, uh, when you said, uh, that your, your body just like stopped loving, what you were doing in, in CrossFit. It reminded me, one of my uh, friends told me one time, he's like, I think our bodies have like a certain amount, a, amount of repetitions. And, <laughs> and he's like, CrossFit five days a week seems like a good idea, but that's a lot of repetitions in one week. And, uh, you know, not, I, I, I still enjoy it. I thought it was, uh, it was great, but, um, but that is kind of like a uh, common thing. It does get, um, I don't know. You do, do kind of get burnt, burnt out on it in some ways, you know, in some ways people stick with it forever. So. Absolutely. 
And I, I will put in the disclaimer, I never uh, want to come across as I'm knocking CrossFit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I offer whatever gets people out and moving their bodies. Um, with that being said, <laughs> I definitely think there are certain movements um, people should maybe consider modifying in certain workouts. Um, you know, not everyone is intended to snatch 150 pound barbell over their head. Um, so there are just so many different movement variations that, you know, you can, you can provide to each individual because all of our bodies are different. You know, not everyone has the same shoulder mobility. Um, not everyone is able to squat below parallel. So that is, uh, just my side note there. I never want to not CrossFit. <laughs> no, no. And you know, another thing that you said, um, you know, singing the praises of CrossFit here. Um, I've always told people like, if you move to a town and you don't know anyone, like join a CrossFit gym and you've got absolutely. like a whole room full of friends, like built in right there. It, the, the, you're absolutely right about the communities. They, it's second to none. 100%. I've made some of my best friends at a CrossFit gym. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I think it's like the, the shared suffering, right. And, um, I guess, <laughs> you know, um, I've had several, uh, tactical games competitors on the show and we talk about the same thing. It's like the, there's a lot of camaraderie there because there is that shared suffering and like, we just did this at the same time, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told you a bit about my competition. I was uh, pulled into this past Saturday to celebrate the one year anniversary of our CrossFit gym here. And uh, yes, there was a lot of suffering. <laughs> Do you feel closer to those people now? 100%. <laughs> And they're like, aren't you ready to come back and do CrossFit? And I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on the second year anniversary. How about that? Yeah, I'll see you next year. <laughs> yep. Once a year, whether I need it or not. <laughs> uh, I love it. So I, I guess, uh, you know, you, you brought up a really good point with, uh, with teaching your, your new clients in uh, the Florida Panhandle. So I guess, how do you, if you're coming into something that, um, you know, you're not really familiar with yourself. How do you um, figure out what your client or what the athlete needs as far as like a, uh, a program or, or fitness regimen, whatever it is, depending on, you know, their, their certain uh, situation? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, as I mentioned, I had a great mentor while I was in Florida. He was the owner of the strength and conditioning gym I was in. It's called Sand Dune Strength and Conditioning. Um, he's been in this industry for probably 15 years now, started out of training out of the trunk of his car. Um, so this guy's had a ton of experience. Um, I really valued all of his knowledge and he was, he was very open and transparent with me. Um, my goal is to own my own gym in the near future. So, um, on the business side of things and with all of his training knowledge, he was very transparent with me through all that. So he was a great resource for me. Um, additionally, I looked into different seminars that I could partake in to continue my education. Um, the pain-free performance was one of them. Um, this was a, a three-day course um, in person that I did that really helped me to understand what does it mean to properly brace your core? Uh, what does it mean to set your pelvis in the correct position uh, before you go into a lift? Um, really breaking down the fundamentals before you put any load on somebody's body. Um, that is something I do with every new client I bring on now in my personal training business. Before I actually start their first session, I bring them in for a complimentary movement assessment. Not only is that a time for them to meet me in person and make sure this relationship is going to work. Um, it's also a time for me to assess how they move just within their bodies um, you know, you, you reference like dancers to weightlifting and CrossFit, but one thing I will say about dancers is they have great body awareness. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Um, and, and working with the public, it, it's pretty interesting to see the lack of body awareness. A lot of people have, um, especially like working with teenage kids. I, I, I noticed a lot oh, of that. Yeah. They're growing so fast and they're just like, I don't know where my arms and my legs are in space, you know? That was, that was also another challenge, but total side note. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember so my big brother uh, grew really fast when we were young. And I remember him like tripping over his feet like a baby deer when he was a teenager. Like he'd just be, and to me, you know, he's two years older. So he's like an adult and just walk around falling. So, yeah. 
Yeah. I, I've, I trained, um, I want to say he was 12 or 13 years old. Um, while I was in Florida, he was a, um, he played basketball and I believe baseball at the time I was training him and just the, like, I would say, okay, we're going to go into a lunge and the way this kid could like move his legs. I'm just like, how do you bend that way? (laughs) There was just no body awareness. So again, another like great learning opportunity for me to really dial it back and, um, and, and teach someone how to properly, properly move their body and feel what muscles we're focusing on. Um, I, I really had to, to trickle back to the basics, um, again, which was what I learned so much about in that pain-free performance course, um, teaching people the fundamentals. And then we look at putting them in movement variations that agree with their body. Yeah. Um, the, the variations is, is something that I've noticed in the programming that you do like, uh, so, um, for reference, before I started doing the speed and agility program, I was going to the gym, but I was squatting, I was deadlifting and I was bench pressing. And that was pretty much it. Like I would do some other stuff, you know, some, uh, cardio warm up and cool down stuff like that. But I was pretty much doing like the, the big movements and, um, the, the stuff that we've done, especially this cycle, like with, um, the hack squat, for example, um, that's not something I'd ever done before. And that was a completely new movement, but it is, you know, it's a squat, but it's completely different feeling compared to like having a barbell on your back. And I'm doing, you know, probably a quarter of the weight that I normally would with a, with having a barbell on my back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a completely different feeling too. So it's, it's interesting to, to see like the, the diversity of, of movements that come up through the program rather than just like deadlift squat bench kind of regimen. Yeah. So my approach to program to programming, excuse me, is I program based on movement patterns. So I look at our fundamental movement patterns that we do in our day to day. And I carefully select variations based on the individual or the sport. Um, so for example, on this cycle, our squat variation is the hack squat. It is very joint friendly. You'll, you notice you're kind of at this like 45 degree angle when you're squatting feels a little weird at first. I always try to give people a heads up about that. Like it almost feels like you're going to tip over Yep. once you perform a few reps or maybe even into your like second set, you're like, damn, this feels really good. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Um, that variation is great for a lot of people who maybe have some knee issues going on, um, because it's not putting a lot of direct pressure on that knee joint as you're squatting. Um, so for a lot of folks that I've worked with who have had knee replacements or some knee pain in the past, that is typically a squat variation that I would try with them. And there are a few different ways that you can approach that variation, um, which is something I try to offer in the speed and agility program. Just knowing in remote programming, not everybody has access to a barbell. You know, maybe somebody doesn't have access to a foam roller to set up on the wall with a set of dumbbells. So I do try to offer some some options within that just to make it, that program as accessible as possible to everybody. Yeah, that brings up an interesting point I hadn't thought of before. <laughs> it, it, it has to be um, a challenge programming for people that you don't see. And then also not knowing where they're going to work out or what equipment they have available. Yeah. Um, and I guess, so was it been, it, I think it's been like three weeks now. Um, I made a transition from a kind of Globo gym to um, a CrossFit gym working in um, on their off time in between classes, but still doing the uh, speed and agility program. You helped me with that. Yeah. Um, I sent you like a, a photo of like, Hey, this looks like their entire gym. Does it look like everything is there that I need? And you're like, yeah, thumbs up. Plus that's a $5,000 treadmill over there. So yeah, go for it. (laughs) So I guess my question is like, uh, how, how how many variations do you have to come up with of like a certain movement to like accommodate everyone? And then, and then how do you think about that? Do you look at like the feedback from individuals? I look at feedback from individuals. Um, Of course, just throughout my experience, um, what I have seen work for specific individuals and athletes, um, 
I, I do have like a handy dandy booklet of, of movement variations that I'll often reference. You know, you can never go wrong with a great resource of information. Um, and I definitely do my research. So, you know, you've definitely sent me some great videos, um, you know, with sh speed shooting that have helped me like, okay, this is, you know, I need to be very mindful of like the ankles and knees. Um, you guys are doing so much like quick movement with sudden stopping. Like, it's really important that your feet are in good shape, your ankles are in good shape, your knees are in good shape. And to continue to put a lot of stress on those joints, that's something I'm super mindful of when I'm creating the program. So I, I am looking for variations that are, that, you know, I, I keep that in mind. Um, so I have quite a few different resources. And then when I, you know, when I need some help, I, I reach out and, and lean into my resources that I have available to me. Nice. Yeah. So one of the, uh, one of the things that we've been doing a lot of, um, in, in this cycle is intervals and, um, I guess specifically, I, I think of like the, the running intervals that we've done, we've done like side shuffle and then, you know, sprint forward, jog back and stuff like that. Um, now, now having context of what you just said, it's like, okay, yeah, that is like working different sides of the ankles, working different sides of the knees, lateral movement, uh, forward and back. And, uh, there's probably a fancy word for that, but, um, <laughs> forward, forward, backward, and then, uh, <laughs> Uh, starting, stopping, things like that. And that's all things that we do on like short courses in USPSA or three gun stuff like that. Um, and the, the intervals specifically in the, in the middle, you're like, okay, work really hard for 60 seconds as an example. And then, uh, uh, rest. I was like, what is that word again? Rest <laughs> for 40, 45 seconds. Three, and then 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Try to get your breath. And then that, that reminds me specifically of like in um, two gun or three gun, a lot of the times we're shooting long distances, which requires um, still um, still positions. You have to get into a position, get really yeah. still, get behind the reticle, get your breathing right and calm down. But you may have just run like 40 yards to get there. Um, so I, I feel like the, the constant repetition that we've been doing this cycle every single day of work really hard catch your breath, work really hard, catch your breath is, has been good for that as well. Amazing. That's yeah. my goal. You should see me in my living room practicing these drills. Really? I actually write them out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get out the, uh, the iPhone. Uh, that's behind the scenes footage right there for sure. My videos are not nearly as good as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> try to throw a little humor in, into them. So hopefully, hopefully it's, it. it's entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, so we kind of talked about uh, a little bit of your, your training philosophy. Um, and I think, you know, in something you just said there is, you know, you personally don't have a background in uh, competitive shooting, but through watching competitive shooting, breaking down videos and stuff like that. There's common movements that we use in a lot of sports that seem to translate over. So I guess like, uh, um, my question is like, do you look, uh, do we, do we as competitive shooters think like, Oh, we have this very special use case and these complex problems that we need special training for. And you're just like, yeah, that's just like basketball or like, that's just like football or I got this. I hope this answers your question. Um, but I will go back to the video you sent me of, is it JJ? Yeah, JJ Ricasa. Mm -hmm. How much I know about speed shooting. <laughs> <laughs> um, that video was actually really helpful for me in, in especially like the lateral movement and then the positioning of the hips. I was like, okay, great. We can easily simulate this. So we're going to do a, a lateral shuffle. And then you are going to take a quick recovery period because now you have to draw and shoot at a target. So you're squaring up your shoulders, you're squaring up your hips. And now I'm going to throw in like that weighted front plate raise, right? So now my, my hips and shoulders are set. There's a lot of stability that has to happen there and everything in that midline has to be engaged. So I, I'm really trying to simulate what you would do in a match, but now we have added some load to it. Um, week over week, I've kind of changed up what those movement patterns are. Um, maybe we'll throw in like a dumbbell snatch or something 
now there's like a full body movement where your heart is getting a little bit more elevated in that movement. Um, excuse me, in that movement. Um, and you're having to really focus on your breath work. Um, so uh, those type of videos have really been beneficial to me in the way that I, I plug in those movements um, for those those drills. Very cool. Yeah. You know, in, in researching a, a little bit of those type of things, I realized that um, USPSA has like, or not USPSA, YouTube has a practical shooting category. So like um, it has, you know, movies, video games, new, new to you and stuff like that. It actually has like a practical shooting thing. So it's uh, you just click on that and boom, there's thousands of videos right there to, uh, to research and, and check out different movements from some, some better than others <laughs> as, oh as YouTube God. goes. <laughs> well, so you, um, you, you mentioned that you, uh, again, you don't have, you know, background in competitive shooting, but you did just do a training day. Are we allowed to talk about this? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you did go out to TSA. You did the, one of the, the tactical games training days. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, like that was a completely new experience for you, right? That was a pretty new experience for me. Um, so prior to that training day, um, I'm definitely more comfortable shooting pistol than rifle. I'll, I'll start. There. Um, and it, it's more of the mechanics of the weapon. So that is definitely something that's held me back from competing in the tactical games. You know, I've had plenty of people ask me, are you going to compete? When are you competing? And if in my mind, I'm like, well, if something goes wrong out there, I don't even know where to begin. And I'm just, oh, as far as like a malfunction or something like that. <laughs> and in any other scenario, I am pressing all the buttons to make something. <laughs> good. In that scenario, I am like, I don't know what to do. I need help. So um, this was the first training day of the year out here at TSA. And it was exactly what I needed. It was six hours of fundamentals, um, you know, learning how to zero my, my rifle, um, how to be efficient with reloading, um, you know, turning the safety on and off, like all of the very basics that I just needed to make myself more comfortable and fluid with. Um, so that was probably one of the best courses I could have attended. Prior to that day, I probably held a rifle four or five times. Nice. And my fiance was standing next to me like, okay, pull the trigger and then you're going to do this and then you're going to do that. So that was what I was used to leading up to training day. At training day, I was like, cool, I'm in full kit. Here we go. <laughs> I have to push all the buttons on my own now. Yeah. <laughs> totally just toss you out in the middle of the, uh, the, the water, let you swim. And I will say, um, yes, I, I would like to compete this year. One of my um, good friends here in Texas, uh, she is a former U.S. Marshal, so she's a, a great shot. And uh, she works out with me quite a bit while she's in town. She's interested in competing as a team this year in the tactical game. So I'm committed to becoming a better shooter for myself and for her, so I don't really let our team down. Um I just completely lost my thought. <laughs> well, so that makes me think like uh, the team match, I feel like is a, a good way to get into it. Like if you're curious oh, yeah. about it, right. Cause oh, yeah. um, we, I've said this for, for years for three gun team matches, there's so much fun and half the fun is the, the team aspect and the other half is the, uh, the shooting and the competitive aspect. And uh, I would imagine kind of the same thing, especially if you got a good partner like that, that can help guide you through the, uh, the match. Yes, it is definitely a good way to dip your toe into the competition. Um, I would feel a lot more comfortable having a, a good solid teammate out there with me rather than running solo on my first, my first competition. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, that sounds like fun actually. Um, okay. So I, I got a couple more questions on the, uh, the speed and agility program. Um, sure. kind of want to, uh, focus a little bit on like the actual, um, program part of it. And maybe we can talk about like some examples of some other movements. We talked about hack squat and uh, shuffle and stuff like that. Um, but I, I guess let's back up. So, uh, what's, what's the goal with the speed and agility program? Like I'll, I'll read you what's on the, uh, the website and then you can maybe translate that for me. So, sure. um, what it says, is, uh, a program designed for those competing in action shooting sports, uh, does the sport you, you compete in require a change of direction? 
is footwork important, important, want to improve your, or excuse me, want to protect your joints and strengthen your tendons, this program's for you. So yeah, all that stuff like appeals to me, especially me personally being over 40, like, Hey, maybe I should have looked after my joints and tendons when I was younger and, um, or looking long distance, like for longevity in the sport, that all sounds great. Um, so what, what I guess was, what was the reason like Tactical Games came out with the speed and agility program. How did you get like get recruited into that? And then uh, what's the uh, what's the ultimate goal with the program? Yeah, so I currently train all of my clients out of a local gym in Liberty Hill, Texas, called Rattler CrossFit. Um, the current owner of the Tactical Games, Jared Helbert, owns the the gym, and for a couple of months over the summer, he observed my personal training and the way I train my clients. So he approached me and said, Hey, you know, I see a huge gap, um, in the speed shooting space for a program like this, all the movements that I see you doing and the way that I see you training your clients, like this is exactly what is needed. Um, he gave me sort of an an outline of what a week should probably look like. Um, because again, I, I wasn't really involved in the speed shooting space. Um, a little bit more familiar with the tactical games format, but again, there's a lot of fitness involved in that. So I see small snippets of the, of the shooting portion. Um, so I said, great, you know, let me, let me write out a week's worth of programming and, you know, give me, lay the feedback on me. Like, let me know what you think. Um, so I wrote that out for him in a couple of days. He's like, Amanda, this is exactly what is needed. Let's publish this. Let's put it on the training app and move forward with it. Um, so there's really a lot baked into that program, um, starting with your warm up and your movement prep. Um, there is a lot of mobility work included in that. Um, additionally, we're looking to you know generate some blood flow and, and prime the joints for the movements that we'll be performing that day. Um, additionally, I'm trying to be very mindful of what I include in that warm up and movement prep. So that it's actually something that you can bring with you to the day of your match. And, you know, the equipment is very limited. It's generally body weight movement or resistance bands. Maybe there's, you know, a light dumbbell or kettlebell involved. Um, But a lot of those movements are a great way for you to warm up match day. You know, take 10 minutes before your match and just get your body ready. Um, So I hope I, I try to note that. Um, in the warm-up section on the uh, on the training app, but hopefully people can kind of take that away with them and say, oh, this is actually a great resource for me um, before I actually dive into match day. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I actually li- uh, really like that. Um, typically, you don't see a lot of three gunners stretching before the uh, <laughs> before the, uh, <laughs> a stage. Maybe a little bit more in USPSA on like a national level, but, um, yeah, I I don't know. Like the, it's weird, right? Because we have, um, I always say there's like, you know, three main aspects of competitive shooting, which would be marksmanship, which is like hitting the target. Right. And then weapons manipulation, which would be drawing, reloading, switching guns, things like that. And then movement and movement. You can save a ton of time on without getting any better at anything else. And, um, I, I think we, I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm certainly guilty of it myself. Like maybe I'll, I'll, uh, you know, do like a waist bend, touch toes a couple of times, you know, do a couple air squats. I'm like, all right, let's do this. And then, you know, yeah. stand around for the next five hours waiting for my turn to shoot, um, yeah. where you get stiff. So I do like the, the warm up portions of it. And, um, they're, they're different every single day based on what we're doing. But I do see, um, you know, now that you're, um, talking about it, like I do see how each of those could be, use like before a stage or before uh, a day of shooting or something like that. Like this one here is coming up where we're going to have to um, get in reverse kneel. Like maybe we're doing some deep squats or some um, split squats or something like that to warm up for that stage. Look at you. I know (laughs) I'm making those connections. It only took me five months, but here we are. (laughs) Um, Getting back to the program. So after the warm up and movement prep, I dive into your strength portion of the day. Um, you have probably noticed all of the, the strength days, um, they're full body workouts. So you will notice there's a lower body component and an upper body component, and probably some core work 
incorporated in there. Um, that is very intentional. Couple reasons. One is for recovery purposes. Um, so we're not just hammering your legs all day on Monday, come Tuesday, you know, you can hardly walk. Um, we're, we're performing say Monday is your hack squat and your, you know, some sort of upper body pull day. Um, come Tuesday, we're looking at totally different movement patterns for the lower and upper body. So we are targeting different muscle groups on those days. Um, so that is very intentional. Additionally, a note that you brought up to me probably a couple months ago now is, hey, Amanda, how many people are actually working out five or six days a week? Well, majority of the population, not so much. Um, with the Speed and Agility program, you'll see that I actually program three strength specific days, um, one full body conditioning day, and then I include one active recovery day that gives you some more like mobility work and just low intensity sustained movement. Um, so really the strength work is, is really only three days a week. And that is definitely what I would recommend for majority of folks, um, three, maybe four days of strength training and, and taking the time for recovery. Cause that, that work is so important and a lot of us neglect that. Yeah, that's for sure. So, so you're talking then, I guess, uh, just off the top of my head without busting open the app. So you're talking like Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Is that right? Or are you talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday being the. So Monday and Tuesday right now are strength specific days. Wednesday mm -hmm. in this current cycle, um, we have a full body conditioning day. So right now we've been focusing on our lateral shuffle drills, our forward and right. backward sprints. Um, Thursday. I give that as a day for active recovery. Generally by Thursday, a lot of people are feeling pretty tired. They're maybe a little sore. Um, and then we'll cap off the week on Friday with your, your third condition or your third strength day. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I just tipped my hand of like, I have no idea what's coming the next day. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say, like, I actually like that part of it of like, yeah. I, I don't have to remember that. Okay. So Monday we're doing this Tuesday, we're doing this. It's just like, I come in, you know, and now it's now for me, it's in the morning. So I come in in the morning, uh, open up the app and the programs there. I just tick, 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 tick on down and do it. And then I go home and that's, that's what I like. That's what I like best for me. Yeah. Um, years ago, a friend of mine, uh, you know, started with a personal trainer and then he, he's like, dude, you got to just go to a personal trainer or you know, <laughs> I, I chose to go to a CrossFit gym. He's like, but you got to just find like a program because there's someone holding you accountable. You, mm -hmm. they do all the, the things for you and you don't have to walk in the gym and be like, uh, do I feel like doing biceps today? Of course I feel like doing that every day, but it, like, you don't ever have to think about it. And that's one of the things I really like about the app is like, I know that there's someone who, um, and I'm speaking to her. I know that there's someone who has put a lot of thought into the movement that I do, the things that I need to work on and then put them all down on an app. I know there's someone on the other end watching like, did Dave do this today? Did, <laughs> did he progress on, on the, uh, on the weights? Did he put up more weight on the, on the, uh, sumo squat or excuse me, uh, sumo deadlift. So yeah, I, I enjoy those aspects of it and having like a set prescription where I don't have to think about it allows me to think about the things that I do well. And to be honest, like I'm not, I would not be good at programming for myself. So I like that the, uh, the app does it. I guess by the app, I mean you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to be honest, I follow a program. Um, I also enjoy having that structure for me to write a program for myself. And I know this is the case for a lot of coaches that I've known and have worked with. They all followed, you know, programs written by somebody else. Um, it's also a great learning opportunity, right? Like you don't know what you don't know. So mm -hmm. It's wonderful to gain insight into someone else's approach in, in their training style. So I, I've followed a program for years and I will always do that. Yeah. I mean, the best trainers have trainers, the best coaches have coaches, right? Like it's, it, you find that in almost everything. Like even, you know, when I was younger, I always thought like adults had it figured out and now I realize like everyone's just faking it, but the, <laughs> like even <laughs> CEOs have coaches and uh, you know, professional um, like, professional football coaches have coaches that, that teach them how to, uh, to improve their life. So, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We're all just doing our best. 
Yeah. <laughs> we're all just trying, just pretending like, yeah, we're looking busy here. So <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So um, we're, let's see, we're almost done with the cycle. I think we have one more week left. Is that right? We are in our final week. Oh, we're in our final week. Okay. So final week of the cycle. So um, I guess, when you're, when you're sitting down to plan a cycle, how do you, how do you like, look at that? Do you, I'm assuming these are like six weeks, right? They are six week cycles. Okay. So six week cycle. When, when you sit down to pr- plan the next six weeks, how do you build on like the things that we've done? Um, or do you just like etch a sketch, shake it up and then like completely toss it out and start over again? <laughs> no, there's definitely a building cycle. Um, and again, I, I look at themes. So for example, this current cycle, um, we incorporated the interval work. So there's a lot of, you know, quick movement, you get that rest period. So we can really push that effort during that work period. Um, and we're repeating that twice a week. So that is, you know, it's, it feels like pretty redundant work, but that's how we get better. We do the same shit over and over again until we're pretty, pretty good at it. (laughs) Um, You'll also notice um, a lot of like wider stance movements. Um, So my focus for this cycle was strengthening our adductors. These are muscles that run along the inner thighs, Um, typically a muscle that we don't give a lot of attention to. And especially in sports, when you're doing a lot of lateral movement, Uh, those muscles are super important to help stabilize the knees. Um, So we gave a lot of attention to, you know, being in a sumo stance, paying attention to the adductors. You've probably tried out that Copenhagen plank that everybody loves so much. I don't know if you've done that one yet. And you're like, what on earth is this movement? Why does Um, this hurt so bad? I'm not moving at all. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So I definitely look at themes uh, for each cycle and just build on that. Nice. So uh, do you have a sneak preview of what to expect for the next cycle or is this the secret expect, so far? Expect a lot of power and explosive movement coming at you next week. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, I can't wait. Cause the, uh, that, that really is like all about, that really is like everything that we do in competitive shooting is explosive movements as fast, faster you can get to the next position, the better off you're going to be. So I'm, uh, I'm pumped to, uh, to have that, uh, on the horizon, looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a good time. All right. So you, so you mentioned before we got started here, that you had a couple questions for me. Do you, uh, do you want to ask them or do you want to save them or what do you got? What have you enjoyed the most about the program so far? Cause you've been on the program since when September? Yep. Since September. Okay. So good amount of time. Uh-huh. What have you enjoyed the most? Well, again, I like that there's something for me to do every day and I don't have to think about it. <clears throat> I like the accountability of knowing that there's someone on the other end checking it off. Cause for me, uh, as like, I, I can do stuff, but, for some reason I need someone looking <laughs> like I, I need to have that little bit of accountability. And um, like in the app, we have this uh, um, you know, like you can put comments on, on workouts and stuff like that. And then there's like a little fire button, right? Like you just touch it and it's like, Hey, fire. I don't know what that means. Like thumbs up or something, but <laughs> like the, the other people doing the program will sometimes, you know, give you a little fire emoji and then you do that as well. It's like, Oh, okay. Like that, there, I'm not just like doing this in a vacuum because I do work out by myself. I'm not just doing this in a vacuum. There are other people that, you know, are like rooting for you and everything. I like that encouragement portion of it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with, uh, with the CrossFit community of like suffering together. Like, um, yeah, there is that sense of it as well. Um, and then I think that the, 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 so I really like the first cycle that we did but this cycle that we're currently on, I feel like didn't just like take it up a notch. Like it, it, it was like a leap forward as far as um, applicability specifically to what we do in competitive shooting. And, um, and I'm, I'm super enjoying it. I almost like don't want it to end, but I, you know, obviously we got to change stuff up to keep progressing, but um, the, the lateral shuffles, 
the forward and back, the um, uh, oh, the dumbbell burpees, like those. <laughs> those hey, hurt. hey, you requested a burpee. <laughs> I didn't request a burpee. I said you might want to think about that. Fire to the burpee. <laughs> <laughs> The dumbbell burpees, I think, are awesome because we, you know, in in three gun, we're constantly going prone and getting back up and and um, you know managing obstacles and things like that with our arms while we have a firearm in them. So um, that that's that I'd say is uh, is what I like. Plus, um, there's you you write these big descriptions of like where we're gonna go, and you kind of give like um, an overview of like, hey, this is what the next six weeks is gonna look like, and then. Um, like on, on like a weekly basis or maybe a biweekly basis, there's a, um, here's, here's what we're, we're looking at for this week. These are the things to accomplish on, or excuse me, to, uh, focus on. And then each workout even has that in there of like, focus on this, think about your, um, your core, you know, tighten this. And like, this is what you're, you're, you should be focusing on as you perform this movement. Like, I really like the why portion of it. Um, yeah. Because while, again, like I do like just, you know, shutting off my brain and, and following what the app says and going home, but knowing the why and how it's going to apply to the things that I do in the sport that I like to, to play, I think is really cool. That's awesome. I love to hear that. Um, what has been the biggest change in your performance that you've noticed since starting the program? Uh, so this is kind of a tough one because I'm in Wyoming, right? And there's... I mean, it's today it's 45, thank God. But uh, the last uh, few weeks have been super cold. So we don't actually have like any competitive shooting going on in the northern part of the the country or I guess western part where I'm at. Um, however, from from September when I started, the first match that I did um, after starting the program was Memorial 3-Gun. And that was a, for me, it was a two-day match. And I believe it was 10 stages and it's typically a three-day match. So I shot it with, the, the range officer staff, uh, in two days. And then I worked three days, uh, getting video and photos and stuff like that. So walking around the range the entire time, chasing other competitive shooters who are, you know, performing their best. And I'm, you know, holding the camera as I'm running down the path and stuff like that. And I was less tired after that match overall than I was, you know, in typically a a two day or a three day match. And I attribute that specifically to, getting in the gym every day, working out every day, being on my feet, um, picking things up off the ground and putting them back down again. And, yeah. uh, and, and just being like a, a, a more fit human, like that never is a bad thing. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I think like general physical preparedness because, mm. you know, we, we stand on the, the range for six or seven hours and we shoot for two, two minutes, three minutes total. That was my mind. (laughs) It's really fun for those two, three minutes. (laughs) But but then the rest of the time we're like, uh, you know, walking back and forth and picking up uh, steel, um, like, you know, the single leg uh, art uh, was RDL, right? Single leg RDL. It's like, uh, it's designed exactly for what we do in in three gun all the time is like you lean over with one foot on the ground and you pick up the steel and then you put it back where you found it. And, uh, and then walking and taping targets. And so we're just constantly walking back and forth and back and forth down range to reset targets. And then you got to perform when it's, uh, when it's your turn. So. I love it. And now you're just doing it with the best form possible. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yep. I'm activating my core and yep. <laughs> And, you know, that is why I I try to provide the why and some context around points of performance with, you know, those bigger strength movements. So people can be mindful of how they're moving their bodies, what muscle groups they should be paying attention to. Um, It it is a challenge with remote programming because, you know, I don't have my eyes on you. I I can't see what your position looks like. Um, And that is challenging. It's even challenging for me when I'm writing some of these movements like oof is this gonna just look real sloppy you know these are definitely things i take into consideration um when i am developing a program so i try to provide as much why and in context around the movement and to also understand why are you doing this like how does this actually Mm -hmm. lend to your sport um 
So you'll notice there are a lot of shoulder stability, a lot of midline stability movements, because that's so important in the world of speed shooting. Um, I pay a lot of attention once again to the feet, the ankles, the knees. Um, again, you need those to, to move about as much as you do um, and generate the power that you do. So I definitely try to make it a point to provide as much context as possible. Yeah. And, and I, I think, I think the, so I love the context and I think like the, uh, what was the word you used earlier? Unilateral, right? So like the single sided movements, right? Like those, yep. I, I think specifically help in, in the balance and the things that again, we do in, in competitive shooting. And, uh, again, like I, I typically do squat, deadlift, bench, like none of that's unilateral. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of, right. I guess I don't have a lot. Um, my balance in my right foot is not as good as the balance on my left side, which I'm right-handed. So it doesn't make any sense, but, uh, but I have an old injury, um, on a right ankle where, you know, it was, I was out for, I think like 10 weeks in a boot and like my calf shrank and stuff, but that was like 10 years ago and that still sticks around. So, um, I guess I kind of forgot that that was a thing until we yeah. hit this cycle and we started doing a lot of unilateral things. I was like, Oh, that's right. I fall over when I stand on this foot. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, great point. So you'll definitely continue to see a lot of unilateral movement in the program moving forward. Um, and all that means is we're focusing on one side of the body at a time, whether that be the arms or the legs. Um, and it is such a great way to work out that muscle imbalance because naturally your dominant side, when you are doing a bilateral movement, meaning I'm using both my arms or both my legs at the same time, that dominant side is typically your stronger side that is going to do majority of the work. So it's a great time to focus on one side of the body at a time, work out those muscle imbalances. And also it builds a lot of stability in the joints and in the core because your opposite side of the body actually has to turn on and activate and, and hold the body in a position for you to, to do that work. Um, so you will continue to see a lot of unilateral work incorporated in the program. Very cool. Okay. So if people want to, you know, jump on the, um, the, the tactical game speed and agility training train, <laughs> um, <laughs> Can someone do that mid cycle or do they have to wait for the beginning of a cycle? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's really expected with remote programming. People jump in at any point. Um, I do try to make a note, especially as we're getting towards, you know, that last week or two of the cycle. If some, I notice somebody new has jumped in, I'll send them a side note and say, Hey, this is kind of where I want you to be and how to approach this week's worth of workouts, knowing that we're rounding out this cycle. Um, for example, this week, we're kind of pushing weight, lowering our reps. Um, and for someone just jumping in, that's not necessarily the approach I want them to take. So I do take the time, send them a separate note and just let them know, hey, this is how I want you to handle this week's worth of programming. Um, but by all means, they can definitely jump in at any point. Um, and again, the, the cycles are run about every six weeks. Nice. All right. So if, if uh, someone listening is ready to improve their general physical fitness for competitive shooting, wants to get faster, wants to protect their um, tendons and joints and stuff like that and, uh, and join the program, how do they do that? Yeah. So you can head over to the tacticalgames.com. Um, at the very top of the website, there should be a drop down that's just titled train and you want to head over to online training. Um, from there, you can sign up from the program. We actually offer three different programs on the training app. So you'll just select the speed and agility program. It runs $39.99 a month, I believe. Um, and you will download the push press app, which is the platform we use. You'll be able to view and record all your results for the program there. And you are good to go. Awesome. And mm -hmm. I understand that you've got a, a special gift for the, uh, the listeners as well. Yeah, so you will actually find a sample week of actually this first week's worth of programming from this cycle. It was kind of a mouthful. I had to make sure that came out correctly. <laughs> <laughs> you will find a PDF format uh, featured on the Tactical Games website. So if you want to kind of get an inside peek of the program before you sign up, go ahead and download that PDF, print it out, take it with you to the gym um, and give it a try. 
Very cool. And uh, lastly, I guess if uh, people would like to uh, get a hold of you, if they have any questions or anything, how would they do that? Absolutely. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. My personal Instagram account is amanda.a.cherry. It's my last name. Um, and then I also have a business account. It is at Liberty Hill Strength, and those are both on Instagram. Um, otherwise, the TTG training Instagram page is a great resource of information, um, and you can find me on there as well. Very cool. Well, Amanda, it's it's uh, it's been great chatting with you um, and getting like a, a little peek behind the scenes of what goes into the programming that I've been doing for months. And I appreciate, you know, everything that you've done for, for me and helping me find a new gym, putting out great programming. And uh, thanks for being here on the show and sharing it with everybody else. Yeah. Thank you for having me.